Hello again. I'm Pam O'Connor and I'd like to welcome you to OHAO's second report on historic home architecture in Kalamazoo called What Style Is It? Historian Lynn Houghton is joining us again today and will tell us how to recognize homes built in the historic Gothic Revival style. Lynn? Hi, I'm historian Lynn Houghton here for OHAO, the Old House Owners Workshop standing in front of a beautiful house in the Stewart neighborhood, just south of the downtown area. We're gonna answer the question, what style is it? I'm on the corner of Elm and Eleanor, standing in front of the Prouty home, which was built in 1852 by Amira and Sophia Prouty, who came to Kalamazoo in 1836 from the state of New York. The house was originally built a little bit to the east of here for not only um, Amira and his wife, but also the very large family that they had. Amira was a cabinet maker. He also had the first nursery in the village. And eventually, after they sold the house, about eh, in the 1880s, it was moved to this location in what is not only the Stewart National Historic District, but also the Stewart Local Historic District. So what style is it? We're looking at a Gothic revival. Now, Gothic revivals nationwide were popular between 1840 and 1880. Uh, the style came over from England, as a lot of our architectural styles did in the 19th century. And once it made it here to the United States, it was popularized in a couple different ways. Um, Andrew Jackson Davis, an architect in New York, um, built the first, designed the first Gothic revival homes in the 1830s. And landscape architect Andrew Jackson Downing um, had published several pattern books about this style. It's not a very common style you see around here. You'll see a lot of it over in the northeastern part of the United States, more than you will hear. But we have a couple other examples of this in Kalamazoo and in Kalamazoo County, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. But let's look at this house. This is a real classic Gothic revival. And the way that we're going to be able to identify it is to look at, at it feature by feature. So let's start off with the roof line. Gothic Revival homes, and especially this one, have a high, steep, pitched roof. Uh, and it's also a high, steep, I can call it a high, steep gable roof. Because on either ends, it comes out into a triangular shape, which is called a gable. Now what's really special about this one, and was very common in Gothic Revival homes, is how that gable was decorated. And if you look at the one on the west side, you'll see that it's decorated with what's called verge board. Now, if, depending on what architectural style book you'll see, sometimes they refer to it in a lot of different terms. Sometimes they call it tracery. Sometimes they call it barge board. But the acceptable term is verge board. And let's look at that verge board specifically. Very decorative. And you'll see that on the top part of the roof, the tip of the gable, and on either side of those gables, they have what's called finials, which we see in a lot of houses, but especially in Gothic Revival. The other thing that you see on the second floor is a special window, a smaller bay window called an oriel window, which is something that you would see in Gothic Revivals. Now, not only does this side of the house have a bay window on the second floor, it also has a bay window on the first floor which was very, very typical of that style. The other thing that we see on the, um, it would be the south side of the Prouty home, we see two windows coming off that roof line. Those windows have a special name. Those are called dormers. And if you look at those, there's that repetition of that verge board coming on on those dormers. Um, they do have a little downward sort of decorative element but whether or not they may have had a finial at the top, we're not really too sure at this point. So the roof line is one of the big indicators with Gothic that will tell you whether or not it's a Gothic revival. Now keep in mind, a steeply pitched roof could also be found on other later styles, but we're gonna see these with Gothic. Now sometimes Gothic revivals had other elements in them like towers and turrets. Remember, they're trying to replicate those Gothic buildings of the Middle Ages. And one of the reasons why this style became popular is because it was a very romantic style. And one of the things I read one time is that 
you're going through a period of time, especially in England, specifically in Great Britain, where the romantic poets were very popular. I don't think the poets were the ones that popularized Gothic Revival architecture, but certainly went hand in hand. Let's look at another feature. Let's look at the porch. A great majority of the Gothic Revivals, a very high percentage of Gothic Revivals, had a first floor porch. Well, we're not going to call this a porch. We're going to give it its technical name, a veranda. And you can see with this, with the Prouty home, the veranda wraps around the side and the front of it. And it also has the Gothic arch. If you look at the columns and the Gothic arch that you'll see, another great example about it. The windows are double paned. Um, you've got uh, six window panes over six window panes, so they're double hung. They've got a very interesting decorative element over that, if you can see that. Well, let's talk about position of these homes. Because with the Gothic Revival, I mentioned that they weren't all that popular in the Midwest, but you can find a lot of examples. For example, in Kalamazoo, we have one on South Street called the Dio House. It's 602 West South Street. Also, the Gate House, or the Gate Cottage, located on the historic grounds of the Kalamazoo State Hospital, built in 1880. Now, that's a little variance of a Gothic Revival called Carpenter Gothic. Um, there's also a really nice Gothic in Richland, so you can find them all over the place. So what happened? Why weren't they all that popular? It was recommended that these homes looked really good in a rural setting. So, in fact, originally when this house was built, as I mentioned, it was located a little bit to the east in a very nice sort of rural setting. This style with its, you know, um, gable roof and all the different features of them, really didn't fit well in an urban setting. And so they were eclipsed by the later style coming in Italianate and of course the earlier style of Greek Revival. Now Gothics may not have been built for houses, but Gothic Revival continued to be used especially for churches. So we have a number of churches in Kalamazoo that are built in that style that you are going to find around. So if you look at all these different features here that we talked about today, you may be looking at a Gothic Revival. If you want more information about Gothic Revival, you can check the Kalamazoo Public Library website, the All About Kalamazoo, that can tell you about that. There's a lot of websites about that, and one book that I absolutely love is A Field Guide to American Houses by McAllister's. So you can read more about it. Thank you for joining me for this episode of What Style Is It? Thank you for joining us. Please follow us on Facebook at Old How Old House Owners Workshop. This program is made possible in part by Public Media Network, the O'Connor Fund for Historic Preservation at the Kalamazoo Community Foundation and the Kalamazoo Public Library.